in the headlines. Supreme Court strikes out President Buhari's suit challenging Section 84 of Section 12. 29 abducted wedding guests reunite with families in Gosol, Zemfara State Capital. Peter B2 Senator Ikeru Madu, I am with you in your travels. And on the foreign scene, Tunisian former Prime Minister arrested on suspicion of money laundry. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Updates. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for joining. <music> Now the news in detail. The Supreme Court has struck out President Mohamed Buhari's and the Attorney General of the Federation to challenge in Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act. And the case was expunged on the grounds that it lacks the jurisdiction to entertain the suit and it's an abuse of court process. Earlier notice for the judgment, delivery was served on President Buhari and the National Assembly on Thursday inviting them to appear before the court on Friday for judgment. The president and his minister of justice, Abu Bakr Mailami, had filed a suit at the Supreme Court seeking an interpretation of the controversial clause in the Electoral Amendment Act of 2022. In the suit on April 29, Buhari and Malami, who are the plaintiffs, listed the National Assembly as the sole defendant. There have been several debates regarding Section 84 of Section 12 of the amended Electoral Act of 2022, which was assented to in February. Upon assenting the act, President Buhari had asked the National Assembly to delete the contended clause. However, the parliament declined the president's request. And the House of Representatives has held the Supreme Court judgment which struck out the suit by President Mohamed Buhari seeking to void the provision of Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Amendment Act of 2022. And Representative Benjamin Kalu, the spokesperson of the House, gave the commendation while speaking with journalists on Friday in Abuja. The court on June 24 said that the president lacked the power to direct the National Assembly to amend or enact an act, adding that it violated the principle of separation of power. According to the judgment, there is no part of the constitution that makes the exercise of legislative power subject to the directive of the president. Callow, however, said that the House of Representatives was happy with the Supreme Court judgment, describing the judgment as victory for the supremacy of law making and the National Assembly. He said that the mandate of the House was law making with the intention of breaching a gap created in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that was not captured, added that the House of Reps could only do this by looking at Section 84 of Section 12 of the Electoral Amendment Act. He added that the competitive element was necessary to advance the country's democracy. And police operators in Kaduna have neutralized the bandits in Giwa local government area of the state. The operators also recovered a rifle and a locally fabricated long-range revolver with 12 cartridges as well as motorcycle used by the bandits for nefarious activities. According to the spokesman of the Kaduna State Police Command, DSP Mohammed Jalige, the tactical operation received a distress call in the early hours of Thursday that some armed robbers were sighted along Galadimawa Kidadang Road in Giwa local government area. He said that the command, in a bid to truncate the mission of the bandits, immediately ordered the deployment of a strong nearby force to the location which forced the bandit to flee into the nearby forest with gun injuries. And 29 abducted wedding guests who regained freedom on Thursday evening have been reunited with their families in Gasol, Zanfer State's capital, on Friday. The families of the victims and colleagues were beaming with excitement, jubilation and thanksgiving over the safe return of their relatives. Take a look.
This is the arrival of the 29 abducted wedding guests in Guso after they had regained freedom from their abductors last Thursday. The arrival spark up jubilation, expression of gratitude to God over the safe return of the victims who have been in captivity for 12 days. The chairman of the Union of Communications and Fire State Chapter, Kabiru Garba, said they are thankful and happy. He, however, did not disclose if ransom was paid before securing their release, but according to rumor going round, 20 million naira was said to have been paid. We thank God for the overwhelming victory he has given to us over the incident that happened to our children. Together, God has given us the power of victory over the trial that befell them. Our children were abducted since Saturday the 11th of June and today Friday has been 13 days in captivity and until Thursday evening God gave them freedom. I'm calling on our children to take the incident as a trial that God brought to them and to note that even servants of God face different kinds of trials. We, the rest of the people, we should continue to pray and thank God for the trial and victory he brought. I want people to note that this trial which the victims had faced can befall anyone. It could be recalled that the 29 abducted wedding guests were kidnapped by suspected terrorists at Dogon Ao, bordered community between Sokoto and Zamfara State on Saturday, 11 June, when they were returning from Tambual Town to Guzo after a wedding of one of their colleagues. Those abducted on that fateful day were GSM dealers at Beibeji Plaza in Guzo. The terrorists had initially demanded 145 million naira ransom. And now to traffic matters. The Federal Road Safety Corps, FRC, says it is committed to the fulfillment of its mandate to reduce traffic congestion and road traffic crashes to the barest minimum in the Federal Capital Territory Abuja. And the Sector Commander, FCT Command Ogao Chi, who disclosed this on Friday in Abuja, says strategic systems will be put in place to ensure free flow of traffic and curb crashes. He said the car identified some major routes in the SCT that have severe traffic congestion, which often made people to drive against traffic, resulting into accidents. The FRC bus commended the Federal Capital Development Authority, but also called on the agency to critically look into the use of commercial motorcycles in the SCT. And President Mohamed Buhari has ruled out the bail option for the leader of the proscribed people of Biafra, and that is the IPOP in Namdikalu. Instead, the president insisted that the IPOP leader should justify all the uncomplimentary things he had been saying against Nigeria and Britain. President Mahmoud Buhari said this at a bilateral meeting with the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson at the 26th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Kigali, Rwanda. According to presidential spokesman Femi Adishinov, the president also ruled out seeking a third term in office, claiming that the person who attempted it did not end well. UK Prime Minister and the president also discussed security issues in Nigeria, linking the renewed wave of crimes in Nigeria to the crisis in Libya. Buhari said the keenness of the UK to help Nigeria tackle insecurity is a good step, but also pointed out that since the fall of Muammar Gaddafi after 42 years in power, armed guards have been unleashed on countries in the Sahel. He, however, said the country is making progress in the fight against Boko Haram and other groups. Two Nigerians, E.K. Ekremadu and his wife Beatrice, have been denied bail by a United Kingdom's magistrate court. And the two were arrested by the Metropolitan Police in London for allegedly conspiring to arrange the travel of a child into the UK to her vest organs. The charges follow an investigation by the Metropolitan Police Special Crime Team. A victim in the, is the alleged, in the alleged crime rather, is a 15-year-old boy brought to the UK by the couple from Lagos State. 
A statement on the P Metropolitan Police website uh, this Thursday reads, uh, Beatrice Nwaneka Ikwermadu, 55, of Nigeria is charged with conspiracy to arrange and facilitate travel of another person with a view to exploitation, namely organ harvesting. And Ikere Madu, 60, of Nigeria is charged with conspiracy to arrange and facilitate travel of another person with a view to exploitation, namely organ harvesting. And the couple have been remanded until July 7th. And to political matters, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, LP, Peter B, has said he and his family are praying for the senator, E.K. Kweirmadu, and his family over the trivials. Kweirmadu and his wife, Beatrice, were arrested by the London Metropolitan Police over links to organ harvesting, and they've been charged for allegedly conspiring to bring a child to the UK for organ harvesting. Hours after the news broke, Obi took to his Twitter handle to show his support for the Enugu lawmaker, but called for justice. You're still watching Trust TV News updates coming up shortly. We'll take a look at Adamawa pilgrims visit holy places in Medina. This and other stories after the break. To so stay with us. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency, NOAA. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the news updates on Trust Television. And before we go ahead, let's take a look at our headlines again. We told you that Supreme Court strikes out President Buhari's suit challenging Section 84, subsection 12. And 29 abducted wedding guests reunite with families in Gusau Zemfer State Capital. And moving to more stories, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC, has described as inaccurate a report that the commissions raided a property allegedly belonging to former Chief of Army Staff, Tukor Borute. 
And this is contained in a statement by the spokesperson for the ICPC, Azuka Ogugua, on Friday. According to the statement, the ICPC operatives raided a property in Wuse 2 of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, on June 16 in suspicion of money laundering. With which facts available for the time being indicates that the property is owned by owner of K Salam Construction Company, a military contractor. The statement further said the commission arrested the managing director of K Salam Construction Company, Nigeria Limited, Kabiru Salao, and investigation is ongoing and prefers not to be to preempt rather its outcome and also avoid fren frenzy of a media trial. The theater command, the theater operation had in Kai has inaugurated a new special court martial council in Maiduguri. The court will be currently handle, uh, handling rather 29 cases of officers and soldiers for professional misconduct. When I have to court martial my soldiers, my officers, my soldiers. Because I know that it is because they want to sacrifice for their country that they join the forces. But again, we have rules and regulations that must be obeyed. Let me assure you, the accused persons, that nobody has any reason to fear as the court will carry out its proceedings in the accordance with the provisions of extant rules and regulations. The theatre command has already provided a level playing field for both the accused persons and the prosecution team. To this end, I wish to call on the President, members of the court, and all other stakeholders to remember your oaths, honor, and dignity, which requires you to justify the confidence reposed on you. It's that time of the year again where pilgrims from all over the world move to Saudi Arabia and the pilgrims from Adamo Estate uh, Muslims visit major Islamic holy places in Medina, Saudi Arabia, to offer prayers for the country. Sharif Al Hassan reports that landmark places visited are in the second most holiest city in Islam. His report Medina, the home of peace and tranquility, a city within the shores of Saudi Arabia which once served as the final place of residence of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and where his grave and that of his companions are located. This short description tells why millions of pilgrims visit the holy city before embarking on Umrah and Hajj rituals in Mecca. Since their arrival in the holy city, Adamawa contingents in Medina could not resist the blessings and spiritual attachment of Masjid Al Nabawi Mosque, whose architectural design and its serenity is enough to break anyone's silence, let alone a visitor coming for the first time. Malam Abdul Malik is one among millions of pilgrims from Adamawa, tapping from the abundant blessings of the Holy Mosque while extolling his great virtues in the eyes of Islam. The city of Medea is the holy city that has been blessed. It is the city of the holy prophet, peace be unto him. It is a city full with kind people everywhere. From the grand marks of Prophet Muhammad, the pilgrims accompanied by Islamic clerics embark on a guided tour to some of the notable Islamic landmarks in Medina. This is something I usually see on videos, but today I am here witnessing it live. Before, people were send it to me, but now seeing is believing. The city of Medina holds an important place in the minds of Muslims as the second most holiest city in Islam. Though not part of Hajj and Umrah requirements, but the city always serves as a constant reminder of how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions fought hard to stabilize the religion of Islam. 
While in Medina, intending pilgrims are also expected to visit the holy marks of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Kuba Mosque, the dead farm of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and of course the Battle of Uhud and other notable places in this holy city. Moving on, the Acting Director General, National Population Commission, MPC Ugoise Mbago, said that the 187 billion Naira earmarked for 2023 population and housing census slated for April 2023 is inadequate. She made this known during a roundtable meeting organized by the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies on Thursday in Abuja, with the theme the 2023 population and housing census issues, challenges and way forward. Mbago said that the census was going to be, she said that the commission has successfully demarcated 772 local government areas out of the 774 in the country. And the House of Representatives has called on the National Lottery Regulatory Commission to ensure that all gaming operators in Nigeria integrate uh, national identity, the national identity, that's the NIN, in the data collection. The call followed the adoption of a motion moved by Ibrahim A. Isiaka at plenary on Thursday. Presenting the motion, he said the Critical barrier to entry for customers is age and identity verification in age-restricted businesses like casinos and online gaming platforms. He therefore said there is an increased need for such verifications in virtual situations in order to secure both customers and the operators. As he noted that the global gaming market is estimated to generate $400 to $500 dollar billion, uh, billion dollars rather yearly, adding that with the consistency of the current trends by 2022, it is said to be worth around $565 billion with increasing amounts of revenues coming from online gaming in its many forms. The House mandated the Committee on Governmental Affairs to ensure compliance. And on the foreign scene, the Tunisian police have arrested former Prime Minister Hamadi Javali, a former senior member of the Ennahda party on suspicion of money laundry. Police in the city of Suse seized the phones of Javali and his wife and took him to the unknown location on Thursday, according to a statement by his family on Facebook. Javali's arrest raises opposition and concerns over the human rights situation in Tunisia since President Kais Saeed dissolved a parliament last July in a move his opponent called a coup. And in sports, FIFA has approved a 26-man squad for, his, for this year's World Cup in Qatar. The move is in line with recent national competitions and is an expansion on the 23-man squad that had been used before the coronavirus pandemic. FIFA also said up to 15 substitutes can be named for a game, meaning, meaning that player misses out and the deadline for all 32 countries competing to submit their final score is 20th of October, to, that is 30 days before the first game between Senegal and the Netherlands at the Al Thumana Stadium in Qatar. And with that, we've come to the end of the news update at this hour. For more, you can follow us on our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.